Jack.
Good evening and welcome to the Arts and Cultural Commission meeting on February 8th, 2023. And Commissioner Snell will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could all stand. Please stand. You're right. No, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. See, I told you. Madam Secretary, would you please provide us with the roll call? Thank you. When your name is called, please answer with here or present. Commissioner Smith Hatch? Here. Commissioner Keene? Here. Commissioner Banks? Present. Vice Chair Schnell? Here. Chair Jenkins? Here. For the record, all members of the Arts and Culture Commission are present. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll now move to public comments. Public comments. There will be a three minute time limit. And cultural commission and shall not consist of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain a professional courteous decorum during their comments. State law prohibits the arts and cultural commission from taking action on a specific item unless it appears on the agenda. Um, Madam Secretary, are there any public comments? Yes, there's one public comment. All right, thank you. And Dana Yarker. Any trouble. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, the, the Cultural Council, thank you very much for this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of you for all the work that you do that is always underappreciated. And I have great hopes for great things happening in the future. But one special thing that I wanted to bring attention to, in addition to the change of her hair, was the mural that Ashley created down Ola Mendes and the tribute and honor to, uh, to our, our veterans. And it's, it, maybe it's been done, but I saw it for the first time. It's very moving. And I just want to thank you, adding that part to our, uh, to our visual arts in Dana Point. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, and we'll move on to the agenda. We'll call the item. Number one, approval of the minutes from the November 9th, 2022 Arts and Cultural Commission meeting. Um, the recommended action, the Arts and Cultural Commission approved the minutes and forward to the City Council with a recommendation to receive and file. Um, do, all right, Commissioner uh, Bank, did we have a, we did call. So we'll need a second for Commissioner Banks' motion. Okay, is there a second? I second. Commissioner Keene seconds. Madam Secretary, you can call for the vote. Yes. Commissioner Smith Hatch? Yes. Commissioner Keene? Yes. Commissioner Banks? Yes. Vice Chair Schnell? Yes. Chair Jenkins? Yes. By a vote of five to zero, this motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to unfinished business. Number two, Lantern Bay sta Park Stairs update. Rec and we'll ask for a staff report. Good evening, commissioners. Chair Jenkins, thank you guys very much for allowing me to be here tonight. I appreciate the time. Um, I have a brief staff update, receive and file, and then uh, Commissioner Schnell will go ahead and uh, give a presentation up there. We had a meeting yesterday with um, the two of the contractors and the artists um, and city staff and the project seems to proceed, be proceeding nicely. There was a landscape design that was presented. I think the landscape design uh, is going to look very, very nice on the stairs uh, next to the artwork. Um, so that was presented. And then there was a prolonged discussion about timing of the installation. And there was no decisions made yesterday about the timing. I can't uh, provide you with that. Um, but the 
artist and the um, concrete contractor are going to work hand in hand and closely to have that installed. That's my report. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, Commissioner Schnell. Anyway, um, really, really exciting what is going on. And uh, first off, something that's really cool. I was down there the other day and the new railings are being installed and put in. So those look great. So that's one step forward to kind of feel like things are going along. Um, I have a couple pictures that I just wanted to show you tonight. This is Maya Tavanati, the artist. And um, I've talked with her quite a bit. And the, the process is taking a lot longer than she thought. And basically, it's 118 stairs. You have to keep reminding yourself. And she's doing them, making, hand making each of the pieces that go into this mosaic piece. So some of the pieces are ceramic and various different colors. So they fire those. And then some of the pieces are glass. So there's both of that, I think, is my next one, is that the detail? Well, there's another one that she's working. This is um, a woman that came in. She has artists in residence that'll spend a couple weeks with her. This artist was from Australia, came for two weeks, spent time working on the mosaic pieces, so they do it in four foot by eight foot sort of panels that are, as you can see here, and then they need, they'll need they eventually go back in and grout them and cut. I mean, there's still a long, long process. And uh, I think they're on panel number seven of working on now. She's been getting seven um, Orange County artists have been helping her out various times um, throughout the week. They work really the weekends. They work minimum six days a week, if not more, doing all this, firing everything and putting it all together. And um, then she has had a really interesting, some students from some of the colleges that have come in, maybe the next one, because I think that, that one shows like the detail. So you can see the little ceramic pieces and then the glass pieces. And then she's so funny, she said, they don't show as sparkly in the pictures as they do in, in person. And I go, okay, okay, don't worry, don't worry. She goes, oh, they're just amazing. <clears throat> but she has some students that'll get 150 work for 150 hours or something. Then they'll get like three units of credit at their college. So I think that's fabulous too. And what an experience that they get to have hands-on learning a new process and everything. So <clears throat> as of right now, all of a sudden I got, uh-uh. This is our hope. We have all been asking about possibly going to the studio. We are looking at Friday, February 17th at um, one o'clock. And, you know, I'm not sure logistically how we'll kind of figure it out, I guess, People can carpool and meet up there. It's in the city of Orange. So I'll have to get, you know, addresses and all the information. I don't know. Jamie, maybe I should be giving it to you and you give it out to all of us. Or what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts? You can send it to me and then I'll see. Okay. And my other game plan is to have, I understand Mike Frost really wants to come. So I will invite Mike. And I also 
am going to invite Brianna Greenberg from the Dana Point Times. We are going to really end the current artists and residents that will be there. She's from Puerto Rico and I guess is like well known in the world of this. So how wonderful is this going to be to actually be there, listen to Maya, see what's actually going on. So cool, huh? If we invite the city council, would that be too many in that room? I think, oh, you mean the whole city council? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think, yeah. Okay. I know that Mike said that he would like to go. Mayor okay. Frost. <laughs> Thank you. Just a question of clarification, since if all of this attend, then is it an official city um, arts and cultural commission um, meeting? It, <clears throat> it is not an official um, arts and culture commission meeting. However, you cannot talk about business of the arts and culture while you're there. So we can't talk amongst ourselves. No, we we stage? could talk. We could talk about the mural. You can talk about the mural, but not but other not other commission else. related Got business. It. So okay. I would say that yesterday the artist was very excited about having folks to the studio, and I think it'll be a great opportunity. And um, I might even join you guys and bring a professional photographer. So fantastic. Oh, we would love that. Any right? other any other questions from the or comments from the commissioners? Okay. Oh, thank you, Karen. You're welcome. She's kind of taking the ball. It's just to receive an update and discuss, so we'll move on to the next item. The number three, the uh, utility box artwork program, phase three update. And I believe that's you, Jamie. Yes. Good evening, commissioners. Since our last meeting in November, the rest of the utility boxes in phase three have been wrapped and updated on our city website. Um, so just to give you a refresher on danapoint.org, go under department. And then there's a designated section for Arts and Culture Commission. And then we have Dana Point Public Art. And then it shows all of our utility boxes, sculptures, statues, mosaics, and everything um, in the city. Just go to Utility Box Art Program, Phase 1. And then if you scroll down, phase, this is the start of Phase 3. And then the utility boxes that have just been wrapped since November. Yes, so this one's. <laughs> yes, right on Stonehill. Stonehill. <laughs> This is, he has a lot. Oh, the big one by Creekside Park was just wrapped. It's this one. Yes. So I just wanted to showcase all of the new utility boxes. Um, city clerk department is currently working on updating our website to make it look a little bit prettier than just like a list. Um, and then in other news, we'll be working with our contractor on the remaining two boxes, which is the Dana Point Historical Society box, as well as Kesa's Maddie's Dream Box with the sea turtles, and rewrapping several boxes that um, Public Works had to um, replace. So I'm available if there's, if there's any questions. Thank you. I do. Um, is there damage to them? How are they damaged? So the boxes that we had to replace? Yes. So they're the traffic signal control boxes. So depending, I know we had to rewrap the wave one. This one, we had to rewrap this one because there was damage to it during the rains, like the electrical inside. So this one was wrapped and then a week later we had to replace it, which... Bummer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it just depends on Matt and looking at the condition of the boxes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments on the utility boxes? 
Thank you. This is an item just to receive an update and discuss. So we'll move on to the next item. And the next item is the Dana Point Sister City up. I can start first and then I'll have. Um, so good evening, commissioners. On January 13th, 2023, Mayor Frost and the mayor of Sorrento, Italy, Massimo Coppola signed a friendship agreement. And this is the start of Dana Point and Sorrento working together to build a city to city relationship to promote cooperation in tourism, arts, culture, education, and mutual economic initiatives. Dana Point Sister Cities is led by Bob Zaza, and he will be holding a number of social events this year to support cultural interactions locally, regionally, as well as internationally. And he is here to give you more updates. Thank you very much. I'm Bob Zaza. I'm president of the Dana Point Sister Cities International. Uh, as Jamie said, we signed the contract uh, January 13th, a formal fellowship agreement, which is the first step. You commit to doing events with each other, at least one event with each other. The event they have asked for is to have some artists uh, to go over to Sorrento at the Sorrento Foundation, which is a beautiful villa. It's called the Villa Florentino in uh, downtown Sorrento. Uh, they were going to do it at the museum, but the museum has been in Italian construction. <laughs> I can't ever take forever. <laughs> so I said, forget it. <laughs> so we went to the private Sorrento Florentine. The Sorrento, the Sorrento Foundation is owned by a very wealthy gentleman who lives now in Switzerland, but's from Sorrento and owns a cruise company. <clears throat> he bought this beautiful villa called Villa Florentino. I'll be sending that pic, those pictures to the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Earl, to the uh, um, <clears throat> Data Point Sister Cities board. We'll be discussing this on January the 19th, excuse me, February the 19th, pardon me, uh, at our board meeting. Uh, and the first event is to bring them over. I have talked to the California Art Club. I've talked to Rick Delante, Orange County California Art Club, uh, and uh, Peter Adams and Elaine this morning. They're going to give me the names on Friday. Uh, they've got four or five people. One of them, I'm, I'm trying to get the young lady that came over that, that who, who's picture we bought at the Maritime Museum. Um, and then also uh, the uh, Russian uh, guy that is the uh, artist that who is the protege of uh, Peter Adams. And he was very good. And he also sold a painting at, at the, the Maritime Institute that Karen uh, chaired. So that's what's going on with Sorrento right now. Uh, we are going to, we're having a meeting next week with an event planner for the Taste of Italy, which will be in the fall probably October 23rd, penciled in, which will be, will be inviting the Italians over here. Uh, I've sent an email to mayor, uh, um, um, the mayor, international relations person, and then uh, also uh, the uh, Italian consulate in LA. And so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. And Vicky Carabini, Vicky is the sister city's chairman of Capistrano, Italy in San Juan. And she's got very active and she speaks fluent Italian too. And she's a, she's a good friend. So the Taste of Italy will probably be Dana Point centered, but also probably San Juan because they have the Italian sister city as well. That's that. Two other things real quickly, uh, just to give you an update. Uh, we will have our board meeting. Uh, we had a pending uh, friendship agreement with uh, uh, Laguna Nagal. Uh, they wanted to change the name. I said, no. Uh, I said, when you get 75 people, give me a call. <laughs> so, but we're going to discuss it at our board meeting because they, they, you know, we'd like to get some, some, uh, this thing kind of took a life of its own. So basically we just are trying to get some more members because we only have 34,000 people here. The focus, I think this year is to get more Dana Point members. That's what we really need to do. We got about seventy-five on the on the list, but we get about sixty at most of our events. So our goal this year: three things: more members, get some sponsorships, and then uh, on to, on top of that, really move forward strongly with both uh, Sorrento and then uh, proceed, continue to proceed with Thessaloniki, Greece, where we already have the exchange program between the uh, Junior High School of Laguna Hills. 
Miguel Hills High School. They did a video um, for a typical day in the life of a teenager in Orange County. They sent it to Aristotle High School in Thessaloniki, Greece. They're doing one. We're waiting for it to come back. I'm doing that through Interact Kids in, uh, at, uh, at Rotary. So Nancy and I went to uh, Rotary last week, uh, Thursday, presented opportunities for them to maybe do an exchange. And uh, Nancy, we got seven nice responses so far. So uh, Nancy is the ambassador for our youth program for our sister cities. Uh, last thing, um, I want to, I was very active in Pasadena and we had an outstanding Distinguished Speakers Bureau. I called the people that were doing it and they're gonna do it at Seegers from going forward. But they bring in like George Bush and you know big you know, national people. But I'd like to do one here. And uh, I've talked to uh, the fish tank, I talked to Larry. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna meet with him as soon as we get finished because there's an evening rotary meeting going on right now at Brio. And uh, he is uh, uh, gonna donate part and give us a really good deal at the fish tank. It's a really good location to do, uh, to do that. Uh, and um, we have an artist. We can do Tim Clark. I've talked to Tim Clark about this, the symphony the other night. He's interested in doing it. He did that lecture for us in New York. Uh, Barbara Johannes was with us. That he's, he's outstanding. He's a very good local artist. It's an artist thing. We'll focus on art. What I'd like to do with the commission, I know you don't have a budget, but I'll get a uh, I'll get Compass or somebody to be the major donor. It's not huge money, because basically you've got to pay for food and the fish tank and give a little honorarium to the speakers. But there'll be art-based uh, authors. Um, we'll do some leadership things. There's a guy that uh, uh, there's a billionaire that started a, a software firm here in, uh, in Irvine, actually. Outstanding guy. It went to his lecture at uh, the Concordia Business School. And uh, anyway... Probably do four this year. Nothing, nothing big. Just get it started, and uh, hopefully it can grow. I think it would be a wonderful addition to our culture. And my request to you is, I just need the backing of the Arts and Cultural Commission to do such a thing. It will help me with the getting the sponsorships. Uh, uh, we'll probably get some additional uh, real estate people to help me. <laughs> see what see what I can do about that, and. Uh, and then maybe some other businesses in town. But again, I don't think it's gonna be more than five, six grand. It's not gonna be a big money. Uh, I might have to reach out to my favorite Irish saint, you know, um, say Michael of uh, Killebrew, but we'll see. So uh, it'd be matching ones. If uh, I, He's told me if I can raise some money, Michael Frost told me the same thing. If I can raise some money, they might just throw a few, few shekels in the can. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, that's what's going on with us. That's all. So that's all that's going on. We're very bored. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, just when I'm sorry, when, I, I you might have some minutes. questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner questions? Banks. Uh, Bob, I'm going to Sorrento in April. Right. And uh, you sent me the lady's name. Veronica. I guess I better sign up as a member, right? How do I sign yeah, up as a member? Yeah, you better sign up. <laughs> DPSisterCities.org. There's I'm a sorry? QR code. DPSisterCities.org. There's okay. a QR code. Okay. And it's $100 for a family, $50 bucks for, per person. We Most of our revenue is going to be from ticket sales, as you, as you know. Okay. And right. uh, so, yes, that's how you join. All right. We so, really need to – I'm trying to – I don't know if we're going to do a speakers or I, we got to talk about it at the board meeting because I, we, I, I can't do it by myself. I'm, I mean, I'm going to contact her and I don't know if we want to do anything as art at the commission to send over there or a little gift or something. I, I yeah, I was thinking, I just, that I just thought us as you're talking yeah. because I did email him and say, I'm going. Yeah. Well, so. we do have a, they did um, Jamie and Kelly when we had the maritime, uh -huh. uh, um, thing at, Dan, at Dana's uh, gallery uh, bought a picture for uh, them. It's a small, nice picture, but we need, I need more swag. <laughs> I got to get Dana hats or something, you know, t-shirts or whatever, but we need, yeah, we need to do something. You're right. Okay. I'd be more than no, you're happy exactly to right. represent them. Yeah. You're exactly right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we I'm need to do something. There. And I, uh, but it's, I, I'm, a, I'm hoping they'll come in the fall, you know, Okay. It's colder there than here, so it's nice. We'll see what happens. Thank you.
Bob, I know um, we we took a photograph and there's the, of Claire Miller's piece, yeah, which is wonderful. Did you see that? I email? haven't seen. The, I mean, I saw the the, the okay. Kelly Kelly has a picture in her office. I and I brought it to Minuteman. Oh, you brought so it. that oh, we good. can possibly because we kind of talked about wouldn't it be nice to have maybe poster made either with that and then something on Sorrento. So we're, we're working on that as an idea, because mm -hmm. that's another way people would like to have, you know, and not realizing, oh, data point sister cities and, and well, this and that. So that was um, a good idea that you had. And uh, I did talk to Bill Atkins about that. And he said that, uh, show me some pictures. So I sent him about five or six Okay. I called Sorrento. Yes. They said, send me, I said, send me your best ones from the tourist agency. They did. I also found some online. So Bill's kind of waiting for us to at the board meeting to kind of, just, I, you know what? I, 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 kind of, I kind of pulled back because, I mean, I'm I'm going a little bit too fast. Yeah. So I'm trying to, and I talked to Vicky about this as well. I said, <laughs> I just. <laughs> you notice we're all just, laughing. <laughs> I'm a hospital administrator. I do shit. <laughs> no, we're, I, I make we're, decisions. we're all laughing and going. I make decisions. Yeah, well. thank you. I get bored. I get bored easily. Anyway, go anyway, back to work. Well anyway, <laughs> point being, I need to stop and take a deep breath and get a little more direction. Uh, but I do want to get some uh, consensus on that because um, I am getting a quote for some hats. You know, I got to get some swag, right? But I think the poster idea. And having Bill do something stylized like he did for Laguna Beach or just a picture. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But we'll bring it up at the board maybe, meeting. Yeah, maybe uh, something that says Dana Point. I, we'll yeah, it'll something it'll say on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. And Sister City, whatever, Dana Point. Yeah, something yeah. that people can, they walk in and they say, oh, you know. and Exactly. And we can talk about it, but maybe we could also have a, a Q are with um, that people can plug in and we have a great city um, video. I mean, things like that, that people can, you know, if we have that yeah. there and then they can take a picture of it. Yeah, that'd be and, great. and if we change it, it'll be changed in the QR you, too, the right? The state of the, the, state yeah, of the city thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They went, that's one of the reasons, by the way, just for your information, that was a real clincher. Because I sent that to Veronica. Veronica Morasco is the lady that's the um, trip advisor, number four trip advisor, tour guide of Italy. Happens to be in Sorrento. Just lucked out. Her best friend happened to be the mayor of Sorrento. So they had coffee. And she said, send me something about staying a point. So I called Vicky. I said, can you send me a, the state of the, you know, the one you're talking right. about. The state of the thing. Well, the guy they went ape, they went ape for it. They thought it was oh my God. They were surfing the girls, the boats, and everything. Else. This is like just like us. I said, that's the point. It's just yeah. like you, you know, on the harbor, on the Mediterranean climate. You know, same uh, big big town for uh, tourism. You know, they have so many yeah. of the same things. And then we we sent them the five points. And the five points are for us. Our cultural icons are surfing. American music, the music preserves, opera, because that's how it started, actually, when when Lisa uh, Bartlett started it. Um, uh, ocean and mammal preservation, which they're big into, big into environment uh, things. And then uh, also um, the um, 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 art, uh, plein air art, because a lot of artists in the 1800s and early 1900s went to Sorrento because the light was good, like France, like here. So that's why they picked coming over here for the art. That was a big thing for them. So, uh, you know, they want to see Ashley's art and they want to see Karen's art and everybody's art. So, you know, uh, the theme is landscape art, that's, which is perfect for us. So that's what's going to, I think, going to happen. But you're, you're exactly right. Okay. And I'll send you a film that we're working on. For oh, even the... better. Okay. Right. Even better. Does Todd have that? Pardon? Does Todd have that? I have it. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm now the liaison. He mentioned it today. At yeah, I'm down the liaison. All right, so. yeah, okay. okay. Anyway, other questions? Ms. Hatch, any questions? Thank no, you, I think you, thank you very thank much. You thank you for presenting. Thanks for the extra time. I appreciate it. Okay. I didn't get the business. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Um, I'm a bit confused because this uh, this item was just to receive and update and discuss. So we'll move on to the next item. And I believe that um, Bob Sasa asked for us to for something, some decision from our group. Or I mean, we cannot do that tonight. That's correct. You'll have but to itemize it on the it next on time. Another agenda on the on next, next agenda, agenda item, and then have a recommendation at that point. And I can work with Kelly as to what it should entail. Correct. Okay. Or Thank you can you. work with Jamie or myself as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? Okay. Let's move on to number five. Next item, the local arts and culture related nonprofit organization. And I will turn it over to Commissioner Smith Hatch for a report. Hi, a quick report on this is that we held um, this event on January 12th, and it was quite a success. All of the organizations we invited, a majority of them were able to attend. Um, at the event, we had them share their mission and their purpose, and then they provided us information about their upcoming events, which has uh, manifested into this amazing master calendar that the city has put together. Um, so I believe this is, a, is this available to the public? I can put it on the website, but since there's a lot of TBD dates, it's kind of difficult, but we can put it on the local arts and culture organization um, tab. Sounds good. Thank you, Jamie. Um, so that might be a good place for it to live um, and just, you know, hopefully the TBDs will be filled in soon. Um, so the event went really well, and we are planning to do a second um, sort of follow-up training in June called a nonprofit summit. And we asked everybody what they were interested in learning about um, and doing some training, and most of it was around grant writing. Um, so we will probably hopefully get a speaker or somebody on board to help us with that and, and come up with a few other type of training events for our local nonprofits. So it went really well, and um, big thank you to Jamie and Kelly for helping facilitate that meeting. I um, am already going to add also thank you very much, Jamie, for putting together the list of all the local uh, nonprofits and the contact and the information. That was wonderful and, you know, really, really good. You will not believe it. This morning, I met with a young gentleman, with Rick Stein and Anthony Small, and I met a brand new arts nonprofit right here in Dana Point called Arts for All. And his basic, he's the CEO and the founder of this group where his mission is to give disadvantaged youth the opportunity to have music education. And he is starting with the initial program at Dan Mann's music studio, music store, where um, the students of a variety of ages get a group of 20 different lessons and opportunities to learn music either, you know, piano or guitar, most of the instruments that he has there, and then have the teachers. And then their goal, and he's already got, he's so excited about this, is that to have a final performance of this gr first group of students at uh, Stillwater up on the stage and have a thing. So, um, I will send this over to you, Jamie. His name is Bryce Hansen. And um, what a treat and what a coincidence that he had reached out um, to Rick Stein at Arts Orange County and Rick contacted me and goes, Karen, do you know him? I go, no, no. Well, let's get together. And um, so very good. Already another new group and nice to bring him in and give him ideas on grant writing and all the things as he's putting his nonprofit together. Neat, huh? 
So just to add on that, Karen, um, Bryce reached out to the city already, and he's on our list as well. And we informed him of the potential meeting coming up in June, and he was very excited about that. So he he's a real go getter. Good. He uh, I, I kept complimenting him on that. He's very young, and really has a direction and passion and mission in mind and he's wonderful can't wait for all you guys to meet him thank you any other comments discussion items okay um we'll move to on to call for the next item the direct number six directory for local dana point artists and I will ask um, Vice Chair Snell and Commissioner Smith Hatch for a report. I don't know who's doing it, so. I will just briefly start out just with what we've, how, where we're at right now, and then I will let Smith Hatch go on. And, yes. One more. Number eight, Save the Holidays? No, which agenda are you on? Oh, gosh. I think I put it on my head. Okay, sorry. We're slaying the holidays. We're on item six. (laughs) Item six, Director for Local Dana Point Artists. Yes, Karen, if you want to go ahead with the update. I'll just start out by saying that um, we have been spending some time uh, putting down artist names, email addresses. And as of this evening, we have 47 artists, uh, predominantly visual artists that are on our list. And I'm sure, you know, we're missing somebody, but, you know, once it gets out there, that would be good. Now, Commissioner Smith Hatch and I have been talking as we've looked at what other cities or artist directories have. They also include other, they include the visual arts and the performing arts. So we are going to do the same. And one of the really good examples is say, so we'd have dance, which is a lot of different arenas there. Ballet, you know, goes on and on. Literary, be playwright, poet, author, music, a lot of different categories that fit under that. Theater, that also could be a part. And then, of course, your visual artist. So, um, We're excited about this as a potential, again, another directory, another thing that we're doing. But the really wonderful part is pulling together all the community and all the resources and having it in one place to where um, a lot of other people could go, wow, I didn't know that. And so that'll be good. So that's my part. And you go on with where we're at with it. Yes. Um, so a little bit of the logistics is that it, um, the city is currently working with their staff or team to find out a way to house this in the best format for it. And um, I believe that is currently being worked on and we might have an update um, by our April meeting. Is that accurate? Yes, I'm currently working on putting it on our website. I did discuss with Commissioner Smith Hatch that it won't look nice just because of the capabilities of our website, which we're currently working on updating. Um, But I will get with Commissioner Smith Hatch and Vice Chair Schnell just because I already see some websites that aren't working and things like that. So once I get that together and then give you kind of a draft and then um, hopefully we'll have it ready by the next meeting. Excellent. And thank you guys for working on that for us. I know it's a big undertaking. (laughs) Right. That's it. Any other questions or thoughts? 
just thank you guys for organizing both the nonprofits and the artists. I know I've spoken with some artists that are just happy that you guys are doing this and that we're all doing it, but you guys are the ones putting in the work and thank you to the city for helping. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. And my thought was, um, some of the areas that we don't have the firsthand experience that you might want to talk to the uh, park and rec. The Sherry Murphy has done work in, um, I know their group has, in literacy, because they've had speakers throughout, I mean, classes throughout the year of people who live here. So she might have some additional names to add to it. So if the, any of the rest of us. Sure. They're on the list, yeah. And the music preserves might also give you some idea of musicians. They're, uh, they're right in here. <laughs> no, but I mean, not only them, they um, are local themselves, and he knows a lot of musicians locally. Yeah, yeah. he was at the meeting this morning, and we already talked about, mm -hmm. yeah. And he was excited mm -hmm. to have that. Because uh, several years ago, um, when he was on the Arts and Cultural Commission, they brought up the fact that they wanted to just have uh, some place in near Hennessy's and just have music on Friday night where local musicians could come. Mm -hmm. And at that time, he mentioned a lot of local musicians that he knew that would be interested in this. And then so also probably the two music stores in town might know local musicians. The plaza has that little round area where they've had entertainment before the children, you know, young adults, kids, they have that area for entertainment that, and we've talked about that in, I think when we Anthony was here. Mm -hmm. So that might be uh, another place because it's outdoors. And even if you had it like on a Saturday morning during the yeah. the uh, farmers the market. farmers market, that would be yeah. a really nice entertainment for that area to show off what the Music Preserve does too. So, no, thank, you. thank you for those suggestions. And I think something we will include for the nonprofits is a list of local venues that would be willing to support them or um, support their medium too. So we can include that in that list. Thank you. This item was just to receive an update and discuss, so we will move on to the next item. Number seven, Consul Chamber Foyer and the Community Center Artworks. And the, the, we had a subcommittee of two commissioners, and that was Commissioner Snell and Commissioner Smith Hatch. So they will provide a report. All right, so I will be reporting on the community center. I worked with the Kid Create Studio, and so for the month of January and February, we have local children's artists um, that are there. Their work is currently being displayed. Um, for the next, so it does, it, we do this in two month increments. Um, so for March and April, typically we have, um, we put out an ask to the local schools and there is a whale-based um, artwork for the Festival of the Whales. And then from there on out, it's very it's varied throughout the years. Um, so Sherry Murphy and I are gonna work together to come up with a really concrete list um, so that each month we're not going to the drawing table, but we can plan it out for the year. And perhaps it gets put in our calendar or it gets put somewhere so people can anticipate what's coming up next um, and plan accordingly to go visit it. Um, so I'll be working with her on that starting with the months of May and June. And we welcome any ideas. Um, usually for the cultural uh, community center, we typically do, um, how will I put this, non-professional artists, um, children and amateurs and um allow them to have the spotlight there. So if anyone has any ideas in that realm, um, we'd love to hear them. Thank you. Anything additional? Commissioner Schell. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, we're fortunate <clears throat> enough to currently in the council chambers foyer right now is the last year's Festival of Oils that were wonderfully framed and, you know, the child's name is right on the thing. I mean, they, they look great and they're wonderful. So obviously it's important that we keep them up through the Festival of Oils within the next couple of weeks or month or so. So the, that's the game plan there. Then 
we had, we sat there and we started talking and I thought, well, what a great opportunity to take our list of visual artists that we currently have that are Dana Point residents and we will be selecting between one to two because there's only about eight slots out there to hang artwork and we will select two artists probably and showcase them and kind of emphasizing this is from our new artist directory these are dana point artists and that's what we are going to show in the council chamber foyer any questions comments i, I think it's good it's, it's an opportunity yeah. to as I say, showcase our local artists. I think it's a great idea. Show, have an additional place since they're only place for two. Could we put it in the city manager's office and then have people come in and just walk in and view his art? <laughs> just what they like, right? I think, I think he would love it. <laughs> I always laugh because Cliff Wassman will come into, you know, the... <laughs> the offices and kind of go, oh, there's one of my pieces. There's one of my, yeah, well, but you might as well have okay. wonderful artwork up on your wall. Thank you. All right, again, this item was just to receive an update and discuss. So we'll move on to new business. Number eight, Prado West Rotating Art. And I believe we have a speaker. Okay. Welcome. Hi, hello everyone, good evening. Thank you for having me and thank you for the invite, Jamie. Um, my name is Hannah Bailey and I work um, with Raintree Partners. So I am their uh, marketing manager, um, came on board last year. I'm the first one to do this with them and they are, if you all are familiar, um, a local real estate developer and investment group located uh, in the plaza. Um, right near the venue you were just speaking about by the Hennessy's. So that's where our corporate office is. Um, and one project that I've been tasked with since I came on board was managing our rotating murals at our property, Prado West. So if you all are familiar, it's the apartment community that was built over the last couple of years. I'm sure you're all very familiar. Um, and part of the project from, from how I understand it is we needed to have a certain amount of public art there, which is very, very cool. Um, and recently we rotated out the first set of murals that were installed last summer. So I wanted to share with you all what we've, what we have done. So um, as a reminder, just the whole kind of background was just to activate the space at Prado West. So there's a courtyard um, that we have branded Prado Square that's right along Amber Lantern. And um, if you drive by on Del Prado or on PCH, you'll notice there's all the retail opening there. Um, and just since the Bear Coast Coffee opened in that area, there's always people sitting at the tables. And so we imagine and we hope that it keeps becoming more and more active um, in that area just to create a public gathering space for residents of Dana Point, um, as, along with all the events that are occurring along Del Prado, which is so fun. There's so much to do. So. The idea was to create kind of like a social living room area in Prado Square for people to gather. And that is where these murals are. So there's two hallways um, that right now there's three big pieces. So this is the first one that recently was installed in December. So the goal here was really, you know, Dana Point. Life on the water, um, the ocean life here that we all love. Um, and being the dolphin and whale capital of the world, I thought was something we should have definitely highlighted. So this was done by a local Southern California artist, um, and he was really excited to work on this for us. So this one is a long hallway we have. Um, it is open to the public, and it leads you out to PCH. Um, so people can walk through and see this one. The next one that we recently rotated, and there's another angle of it. Um, oh, actually, and this is, so this is the artist, Skywalker, and there's this plaque that sits right next to the art that just gives you a little explanation of his inspiration for it, 
um, and just what he painted the um, painting for in his mind. The next one is on the other side. Um, and just for reference, these are all really, really large. They're um, eight feet tall by 12 feet wide. Um, three panels, so when we take them off, they come down in pieces, which is another thing we'll touch on. Um, but this one is on the other side, leading you out to Del Prado. Again, um, like an indoor-outdoor hallway area. Um, and this one was also done by a local Southern, Cal Southern California artist. Um, if you all recognize the scene, it's um, right along the Cove Road that brings you up to the beautiful lookout of the harbor. So this artist was super familiar with Dana Point. He lives in Carlsbad now, but grew up here, I believe he mentioned to me. So he was really familiar with this stretch and wanted to just show it off um, kind of back in the day. So this one was really beautiful. Um, our whole team really loves this. Yeah, it's like rainbow when you walk by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this one's really nice. <laughs> so this one was also installed um, this past December. Another angle of it there. You can kind of see the scale here. And then this was his um, little explanation. And this is living right next to the piece on the wall. So going forward, um, again, how I understand the program to work is we still have five more art rotations. And um, it's supposed to be done every six months. So that's my goal. So in the summer, we'll take these two down, replace them with two more. Um, and then we have that two more times and then one more time until we're done. But ideally, what I would love to do is figure out a way to keep the program going um, just continuously instead of just keeping them there. Um, but to do so, I need to find places for the art that I'm taking down. So I can show you all, um, I'll come back to this, the pieces that were up previously. Um, so this was one of the first pieces installed summer of 2022. And I wasn't involved at this time, but this one was supposed to show kind of the old world to the new world with renewable energy. And I believe the theme of this was like kind of Mother Earth, um, as you'll notice the next one is this beautiful woman with plants and this hummingbird. So these I currently have in storage, which is so sad, um, but they're so big that I can't just put them anywhere. So I just wanted to offer it um, as something to think about if there's ever any ideas of a you know, city space or center or anything that has a bunch of wall space and you'd be interested because I'm gonna do the same thing with the next round. Um, we'll just take them down, store them, and have um, the next set of artists do their thing. So just something to think about. What's the size again? So this full size is um, eight feet tall by 12 feet wide. And yeah. each individual panel um, is four feet wide. Um, and one thing I was thinking of for the next round was actually like challenging the artists we choose to maybe we cut the boards in threes. Like, so it's like nine panels and then maybe they'd be more usable um, if it wasn't just one image, if it was something more abstract or um, it, it will always all be local and, you know, go with the Dana Point theme or something to do with being here. But it's just, it's so big. It's kind of challenging to figure out what to do with them. But yeah, eight feet tall, 12 feet wide. Yeah. So any ideas, just keep it in mind. Um Okay, so I also wanted to share this. Um, I'm sure you have all seen this big lantern on Del Prado. And one thing, um, this was curated before I was involved, but I just wanted to share because it's pretty cool. So when you walk by, um, there's actually a plaque that was installed on the wall. So you'd see it walking on the sidewalk. And it says the information on the left there. And if you scan the QR code, it will bring you to the app store, which you can see there asks you to download an app. And then there's like a cool augmented reality um, experience when you're, if you put your phone up to the lantern. So you can kind of actually see in that picture on the app store, that's a sneak peek of what it does. 
Oh, we have the same picture. Oh, good. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, the uh, that blue circle you see there moves. Um, you'll see a whale swim by. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's like no one really knows it's there, and it's something I'd like to um, push in, you know, on social media and on different things to just get people engaged if they're walking by and interested in this kind of technology. Um, so just a heads up that it exists there. Um, and it was a big investment to get done, as I've heard <laughs> from our team. So pretty cool there. Um, let's see. I want to share anything else. These are the old ones. And that's it for my presentation. So yeah, so in summary, um, or I guess this is the third mural that we have there that um, was actually painted by the uh, Socha um, art class at Dana Hills. And there was discussion on keeping this or including it in the rotation going forward. But I actually think we should keep it because I think it's really cool that we got the students involved in painting it. Um, and there is a plaque next to this one too that actually mentions all of their names. So it's kind of something nice if we leave it up um, and it's really colorful and you see it when you're walking through the courtyard. So this is the third there right now and plans are to keep it there and rotate the other two. Um, let's see, talk about that. Yeah, and that's about it for the art. Yeah, any Thank questions? Thank you, I think Commissioner Banks is. Yeah, please. Actually, I like what you're doing. Thank you. Okay. I I like the the ones that you have been involved in because it kind of gives more of the Dana Point uh, culture. Yeah. The first two that were there before, they're nice, mm -hmm. but they don't really fit in with Dana Point. Yep. So um, keep up the good work. <laughs> Thanks. I, and uh, that's my what I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, when are you all going to unlock the door to get into the place? Great question. <laughs> um, I've been asking that since the first day I started on the art. Um, but since you just mentioned it, I can definitely bring it up again. Um, because that was, I, what I've heard is that it was like keeping them closed just so it didn't become a, a hangout area, but it hasn't been an issue. Um, so there really should be no problem propping those open or just unlocking them really going forward. Are they both locked on both sides? They're both locked. However, you okay. technically could walk through and open it yourself. Oh, I, I, yeah. That's what I've done so and really make gone sense. out the way. But, you know, several people will ask and it is an issue. Okay. I was, I was at a meeting <clears throat> across the way at kind of thing, and two people said they had read in the Dana Point Times about it, and they wanted to view it firsthand. Oh. So I took them around and in to see it, oh. and they were really offended that we couldn't just come in because we were right across the street from the opening. Okay. And I said, that door is locked, and I had to do that. But I mm -hmm. had to know that. Yeah. And most people don't know it, so they really aren't this yeah they aren't seen yeah no it's a great point um and i agree i think the locations are kind of interesting um and it would be definitely more inviting if the gates were um so visibly you could open them. yes so i can i can push on that team um to keep those open definitely Thank yeah you. yes you know um not to exacerbate the issue but it has come up a lot in our nonprofit meeting um, okay People are excited to see it, but they don't have the opportunity to get in there. Got it. So I would just say whenever you do um, decide what hours it's going to be open, if you could maybe post them or share it, I'm sure that the Dana Point Times would love to feature it too or, or maybe update the article with the Times because I think everybody's waiting to find out when they can get in there Gotcha. to see it. Makes sense. Um, so that would be great. Okay. Um, and then <clears throat> my other question was, um, it, it was a little unrelated to what you presented today, but I wanted, since uh, you're from the property, you might have um, some inform information to provide on this, is yeah. that it was my understanding there was going to be an artist in residency program. And I think Chris Justice was in a space that was designated for, for that. And yep. I, I noticed that it's vacated now. And um, just wondering what the intention was for the space in the future. Yep. Um well, first of all, I totally understand what you're saying because I think when you are walking on the sidewalk and that gate's there, it looks like it's so private, right? Like uh -huh. you can't get in. So I definitely understand that. Um, and so Chris Justice, yes, he did vacate 
think it was like right before the holidays he exited there and the purpose was um well the whole idea i think of his um i loved the idea of having him be in there um to showcase his art and ideally you know sell some of the pieces um and keep it going um but unfortunately it wasn't none a lot of his art wasn't um moving so it was just there um for a while and then some um retail potential retail um moving in were interested so it just kind of came time where we were starting to show the space and people were getting a little more serious about renting it so nothing's been signed yet but the idea is to get some sort of um another retailer to open in there in the near future oh, ideally okay. I know. Is, is there going to be then, since that spot is being taken, will there be another place for artists in residency? Are you are you changing that to a different location? Yeah. Well, I think there's opportunity for it. Um, there's on the Coast Highway right now. We have an open suite um, that's just that's just sitting there. I actually the two um, murals that just went up. The artists painted them in there, um, and it all happened really fast. Or else I wanted to have some sort of event around it, which would be really cool, like a live painting, yeah. um, which I would love to do for our next round. Um, but yeah, I think there is opportunity for it if there was the right artist that, um, you know, wanted to come in and use the space because they're, they are just kind of sitting there, um, quite a few, but I think the issue with that specific one was that there was, um, or there is a retailer that's like about to pull the trigger on it. Got it. So I think okay. it was like a timing thing, but definitely open to that, um, yeah. going forward. I think it yeah. was a misunderstanding because I thought this was a designated spot for oh. a, a, an extended period of time versus okay. filling a spot that, you know, while you're waiting for retail. Got it. Okay. I mean, maybe, but from what I've heard recently, it sounds like, I, I don't know if it's like a long term in that spot, but it could, it could be wrong. Um, but that's just the recent talks I've heard. Yeah, so. and just one other idea to throw out too about um, what to do with the artwork. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna think on that too because I, okay. I feel like we can come up with some really good ideas for it. But something for Prada West is that um, you all, since you're, I mean, imagine you're the owners of this art. Yeah. is that correct? Yes. Or who owns the artwork? Yeah, once the art is up, we own it afterwards. So we have full reign to do um, whatever with it. Is that you could, I mean, these pieces, essentially, you could rotate them out for, you know, it's every six months, it would be, you know, you might not see a piece for every three years. So you could certainly keep them in your collection and that's let this true. be a hallway that is forever existing as this public art space. Yeah, that's true. Um, Just keep rotating the ones that, that you that have. Um, it, and did you say it's for five rotations? Is that? Um, yes. So we have five more um, swap outs. Do you know the date the program ends? or, or um, So the last one technically would be summer of 2024 of new art okay. um, that we would be uh, paying for to get, you know, painted and installed. Um, so, but I don't, I wouldn't see any problem. It's more of like the, the cost associated with hiring these artists on. Mm -hmm. But if there was any artists that like wanted to just do it and volunteer, um, I think it'd be a different story as far as continuing it um, going forward. Yeah, I think there's some opportunity with um, our artist directory and to reach out and yeah. see um, availability. When, when uh, we went, I took the two ladies over there to see it. When I had to, I knew we couldn't get in on the street. So I walked them around in the batting, went in there. If some way, I mean, other people would not know that it's there. Yeah. And I don't want to be a permanent tour guide. So I was wondering if they could do a... Um, it's just a stand-up sign with an arrow saying artist work, you know, right there into that opening yeah. on both sides. That wouldn't be obtrusive, but it could be one that could be rotated or put away Yeah, if you were going to have another event in there and didn't want people there or whatever. It's a great idea. Um, yeah, I actually have um, sign stands that also are not really being used. So technically, yeah, we can easily do that. It's a great idea. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Oh. I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> I really love that you involved the art students at Dana Hills High School. And I wonder if maybe you could maybe do that again at some point with a new set of students. Yeah. And they could maybe create something different um, to just be rotated. And also um, for artists that might want to apply, if we could get the word out to the artists on, on the list, um, how did they go about doing that? Is there like a way that we can share that with people so they, they can get a hold of you and show you their concepts? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think what would be best. I mean, contacting me directly. 
okay. which I can give or circulate my contact info. Um, but we also, this kind of segues me into a, a different point. Um, the square, that center courtyard mm -hmm. there, um, we have like a website for it now. Um, some It's just pradosquare.com. Um, we have like a social media page. And the purpose was to kind of um, – highlight all of our local businesses there to help them, you know, get the word out about them. Um, when we were doing the artists or the paintings, we were posting about them on there. Um, so kind of like a, another city page, if you will. And, <clears throat> excuse me, on our Prado Square website, there's contact info on there too that goes directly to me. Okay. Um, and our murals are fe featured on there. There's a photo gallery. Um, and I'm trying to brand that area as like a um, – Dana Point venue, almost, if you will, um, for our retailers if they wanted to do a pop-up shop out there, or if um, Yoga 6 or any of the local yoga studios wanted to do outdoor yoga on Saturday mornings. Um, and again, make it this place that there's always something going on at Prado yeah. Square. Um, so anyways, I think they could probably just like inquire through that website okay. if they were interested. And that's a good point. I can always add something on that website okay. about that program if it's something we develop, um, if people just want to display their art. Yeah. So and, it's and a great another point. thought too is maybe even having some of the artists that have participated, like a little exhibition for them and yeah. their other artwork and maybe featuring what they created in the past, what's on display now, and just kind of having it more be an opening so that people know this is an art area and there's always going to be rotating Such artwork to be on display. Such a good um, idea. And then people are hanging out more in Prado Square and getting a feel for it as well. And Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'd love to see that. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Schnell. I don't know if you – I happened to pull out the presentation that was given – to the Planning Commission and to the Arts and Culture Commission. Okay. Incredibly so back in 2021. <laughs> and uh, I was going, oh, that was a little while ago. <laughs> and, um, but one of the other components that was part of the program mm -hmm. was a Music Preserves performance. Yes. Is that still a possible, I mean, going to happen? Yeah. Oh, yes. Cool. So that's, that's <laughs> the last piece I actually wanted to touch on. Ah, so that, pairing that with, um, have you all noticed the, that little piece of land right next to the Dana Point Ale House on Del Prado that is yeah. under construction? Yes. So we are building this big, large, um, patio area that will have seating, um, and most likely it'll it'll probably be partially overflow from the alehouse. Yes. But I was thinking of what a perfect area to start um, some sort of live music yeah. series there. Um, because to answer your question, yes, we still have the funds for that budgeted and it's not going anywhere. And I was tasked with getting that started in 2023. So it probably is starting way later than what you were told. No, that's that's perfect. And okay. It's when I realize I'm really excited after hearing all of this, that all of this is happening and growing and developing and it's really amazing. So, oh. and I'm glad to see somebody that's so excited about <laughs> doing this. I think, and, I mean, just listening to you all this evening, it's, you're all really passionate about this and making your city so special. And I, that's, what's been so awesome working for a really local company um, and seeing how much everyone cares about Dana Point. I'm from San Clemente, so grew up yeah. all in here, <laughs> you know, but, um, no, I love it. So I'm, I'm super passionate about getting it all going. So, um, I'm very open to being a venue for anything you want to do too. I mean, you were mentioning music. Um, I, I go back and forth about doing that in Prado Square because I'm afraid of the residents and disturbing them. It would have to be a really certain level um, but I'm not as afraid as of doing that on the exterior patio that we're, um, you know, working through building. It should be done very soon. Um, so anyways, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. So we'll get something going this year with the music for sure. Yeah. Any other? 
Thank you Anything so else? much for of coming. Of course. Thank you for all and your feedback. And I think we can look forward to working together in the future. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And I'll get those gates unlocked. I just have one other follow-up question. Is So we're developing this list um, for our nonprofits, for artists of just friendly spaces that they can get involved with. So maybe okay. it's putting up a pop-up shop or um, let's say they want to do a Shakespeare live performance or something, you know, any any medium. Would the Prada Square be something they could reach out and ask about? Um, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Um, I. There's really no, um, right now, if you go on the website, um, you'll see there's like an event guideline um, document there. There's a, like kind of like what our rules would be. Um, there's also a way to reach out. Um, there's a lot more detail on there, but absolutely. I'm trying to get really unique things going on there that people yeah. might not expect. Um, and act as a place for, you know, just people to express themselves and have events where they're, you know, might not be used to going to rather than just the Hennessy's area, like just more um, options. So yes, absolutely. Okay. Great. Yeah. We will include you. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank, well, thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you everyone for your time. I appreciate it. This item is just to receive an update and discuss, and we'll move on to the next item. Number nine, mural by Ola Mendes, and I'll turn it over to Commissioner Keene. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you know what? I failed you guys in that I did not send a picture, so I'm really sorry about that. We I apologize. Yeah, yeah so you have to go to Ola Mendes. <laughs> I spoke with Jorge Ola Mende, um a few like a month ago, and, and we talked about a mural that he wanted to create that was honoring veterans. Um, so there was some inspiration I got from another painting that he had in his restaurant, and I painted it. It's an American flag with a soldier kneeling by a cross um, and some doves and a peace tree. So again, I apologize for dropping the ball and not sending the picture. I'm sorry about that, but definitely go in there. The food is you delicious as ever. Next time. Yes, I will bring it next time. Um, so it was an honor to create that. Um, poor Hay, it was really important for him to, to have something that's honoring veterans and people in the military um, and those who have served our country. Um, so he's also thinking of maybe, you know, making some shirts of the design to for those interested. Um, but on a, a similar note, as I was creating this mural, we were chatting and he has hundreds of paintings. I don't know if any of you have been in there recently, but there's no space on the wall. There's <laughs> and just artwork, all different kinds of paintings, all different kinds of styles and he told me that he has hundreds more in his garage at home and that his his wife is telling him that he needs to start selling these so it's actually uh ola mende's uh 50th anniversary this year that yep 1973 they opened and so we've discussed um you know none of this is um you know set in stone yet um but we've discussed getting some of those paintings out, um, you know, making them really nice, putting a nice frame around them and maybe having an art show or something like that at the restaurant. Um, you know, and I, cause in my mind, he wants them to go, go to good homes. He doesn't want to just be getting rid of his artwork. So I thought it would be maybe a nice thing to help celebrate the 50th anniversary and have an art show with all of this artwork that he's collected over the years, uh, m many of it has hung in the restaurant. So um, just wanted to update you guys on that. And I'm hoping that, you know, we'll be able to get that going soon. But like I said, he's got, from what it sounds like, hundreds of paintings in his, you know, in his restaurant, in his garage. I mean, who knows everywhere he's got all these paintings. Um, but yeah, so I hope to update you more on that soon. Commissioner Banks. Ashley, thank you. I have an idea. If he is supporting the veterans so much, and if he's going to celebrate and have something uh, um, for his anniversary, wouldn't it be great to have like an auction for the pieces? Because if he's got so many and they're just sitting in his garage, maybe he can uh, put them up as an auction or even a silent auction, people can bid on them and that money go to the veterans if he doesn't need that. How, you might yeah. give him that idea. Definitely, and, I and, think that sounds yeah, like a and, great idea. Um, you know, I'm a fundraising person, so I wouldn't mind helping at all. 
although right now I'm up to my head in <laughs> fundraising stuff, but give him that idea because that is really cool that he's doing that for the vets. Definitely, definitely. And I know, um, yeah, I know he he wanted to do give something back. He yeah, that'd be great. told me some stories of, you know, having Ola Mendes and when he first opened it, he'd have two vets that would come in and clean his kitchen because his wife was pregnant at the time. So she would, they would clean the kitchen after they ate their meal. And so <laughs> he just had nothing but good things to say about all of um, his friends and uh, customers that yeah, have served I've in the military. I've met him several times. He probably won't remember me, but give him the idea. Yeah, definitely. I think okay. it's a great idea. Yeah. I'll pass it along to him. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Um, we'll call for the next item which is number 10, the National Arts and Humanities Month in October 2023. And I'm going to start it off and then I'll turn it over to my fellow commissioner, uh, Smith Hatch. But um, we were meeting as an ad hoc committee and I shared with her that several years ago we had the city council um, say that October would be Dana Point's arts and um, Humanities Month to follow that of the national model. And we talked about things to do. And we said, well, there's a lot, We maybe we could put out a special calendar just showing people what art was going on during that month. And so we, whoever was on the commission, um, we asked the different places that we knew played music. Well, it turned out that we would be, um, <clears throat> it wasn't as quite as successful as we thought because we ended up having re every restaurant that had a band come in listed. And so we became more of a marketing of restaurants <laughs> than the actual art and the culture. And so then we went, looked at the visual arts and there were two restaurants in, in uh, the area. Uh, that had a lot of wonderful paintings on the wall. And so we went to them and said, could you have a reception for the artists during that month? So we could list that. And uh, the Harbor Grill, which is no longer a restaurant, did that. And they had the artists during that month. And so um, we were, Commissioner Hatch and I were meeting, and we could come up with some ideas, but we would like to throw it out and maybe put it on the agenda next time and come up with how we might market October uh, as our national, as Dana Point's Arts and Humanities Month and how we could really highlight a lot of things. So, Commissioner. So I, I think one of our items is that we'd like to get this before city council so that they can vote and establish this as the Arts and Culture Month. Um, so we would be aligning with the national. So I'll, you know. Thank you. They already have. Oh, they already have? Yes. Okay, so already that is already in place. Excellent, excellent. All right. Um, so some of the other ideas we had is reaching out to some more restaurants. Um, there's a lot that's open since the last time this was done um, and asking them if they would serve as galleries for the month for local artists. So now we have this great directory together. So we will reach out to our artists um, and see who's willing to put up their artwork or who has enough to display. It might be multiple artists at one restaurant. Um, so that will be on the work of us um, to get a list of those participating restaurants um, to serve as galleries. Also to come up with potentially a weekend event, um, you know, using our outdoor spaces that we've identified even this evening um, that are free and open to the public um, and getting various performers. Um, also going back to that directory and seeing who's available, who, who would be willing um, to participate. Um, but we with it happening in October, we have enough notice to put this together. Um, and then something else is working with the Historical Society um, and finding ways that we can celebrate, um, this is the culture aspect of it, the history of Dana Point and specifically individuals. Um, so we're gonna work with them to find out if we um, you know, highlight a, a few that month or maybe each week of October is a different individual that we highlight and um, provide information onto the community in a series. So sort of getting it off the ground again and, um, and, and taking the time since we have it um, to come up with these ideas and to employ our local artists to help us put this on. Um, and so we welcome any ideas and any hands and help and um, just to make it a really effectual month um, celebrating the arts and culture of Dana Point um, and then the citizens and people here that actually participate in that on a daily basis. So we would like for Jamie to put this item on the agenda for our next meeting so then we could actually 
all come with ideas and, and work that we would have to do to contact. Because maybe not only having the art in the restaurants, there might be some businesses that would love to have some special art out just during that month. And I can think of some that might have right in there. And they would tell their uh, clients or whoever would come in right. that type of business. So. Businesses, banks, I could see us going to um, the Chamber of Commerce and, and throwing this idea out and seeing um, at one of their meetings who's willing to participate. Um, so I think that's a great idea to get it on the agenda for next time. And maybe we can all individually come with ideas and ways that you as a commissioner feel you could participate and add to it. Any other questions? this point Talk. jamie can we also look at the ordinance from city council that designated the month make sure we have that thank you 2021 i had talked to kelly and she did the research and said that they had i i believe you oh okay. let's just pull the pull the ordinance and make sure we have it they resubmitted it every year we we will do the legwork yeah make sure it's taken care of thank you Thank you. So we will move on to the next item, 11, Arts SOC 2023 Membership. Staff report. Good evening, Commissioners. The city's annual membership with Arts Orange County is up for renewal, and the membership fee is $300, just like last year. Um, we're recommending that the Arts and Culture Commission approve our membership to support Arts OC to strengthen and advance Orange County's creative community. I'm available if there's any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Schnell? Um, I just want to um, make one com I mean, not a comment, but every Friday I get a e-newsletter which is wonderful to get from them. And um, it's called This Week in OC Arts. So all over the county, there are all these physical, you know, performances, but even large and small, just with different sorts of groups. And uh, Arts Orange County and another nonprofit group called Voice of Orange County, puts this together. So if anything, I may, I guess, do I bring it? Oh, I'm trying to figure out how, I'll ask them how best you all can sign up for it. Cause it, it's really a treat for me. Cause I'll find things and go, whoa, who knew, you know, could be up in Brea or in Santa Ana or just even locally, but we, should also encourage a lot of our groups to also get involved and get the information out on there. So, I. Mr. Bates, do you need a motion? Yeah. Yes. yes. I, I so motion. move that we approve the recommended action for us to um, support the uh, Arts SOC for $300. I'll second that. Oh, oh. Yes. Commissioner Smith Hatch? Yes. Commissioner Banks? Yes. Commissioner Keene? Yes. Vice Chair Schnell? Yes. Chair Jenkins? Yes. This motion passes by a vote of five to zero. Thank you. Can I ask one clarifying oh. question? Is this an annual fee? Yes. Annual membership? Yes. And Karen, if you can add us to the email, it would be great. Thank you. <laughs> or if As I say, it is really important. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I've been to a couple of them. And what they will have is they'll have special programs just specifically for cities. And it's a mixture of the city staff and arts commissioners, that sort of thing. And it's very informative and um, the majority of the cities and the council in the county are really involved with this. So, yes. Should we? 
We'll start down there with Commissioner Banks. Okay, thank you. Um, I have taken the position of liaison with the DPEIC uh, events. Uh, we are going to be doing the festival, and it's not a, a city. Um, how would I say it? It's it's not a city event. It is a Dana Point Entertainment and Arts Council, and we are having. I still have to meet with, you know, some of uh, Mr. Killebrew, but um, it does not have, you know, this, there's no cost or anything to the city. And, the, you know, we have certain things that we need to talk about, but it will be May 4th and 5th. And we are in the process of working with, we have the committed, the high school, uh, the... Double Tree. I'm working with the. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do. Let's say in the next week, but it is a go. Um, we had approved in the city council that they, you know, we're trying to get the C Terrace. So, but it is going, and it's not a city project. So, but it'll be. It's it's involving kids film it's we've got all kinds of producers going i mean it's it's really directors and these are real director people they're not local they've taken over so it'll be interesting and fun and working on slay the holidays um uh, different belt maria elena i had yeah. the opportunity to the dana point film festival website is very very good so um, you need to let everybody know about that because it, 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 it really is and really informative. And yeah, you guys got a lot of work, a lot of programs and a lot it, it, of things. It, if it's going to be wonderful. Yeah, it's, I mean, it is. And we have a lot of free things for the, for, you know, to be done for the community and um it, it's gonna be fun i can't tell you enough about it but that film is excellent and you'll get a big you you'll understand have you guys seen the film um i can email it to you it's for the dana point film festival okay i think uh, i know that i sent it to uh, mr killabrew and and also to our mayor so slowly getting there but now it's got it's got wheels and it's just going like crazy because we're only a few months not even that we're a few months away so but things are already set so that's an exciting thing. thank you commissioner king yes so as some of you may know um robert madison over at the laguna cliffs marriott started incorporating local artists a few months back um, and really just wanted to highlight some of the local artists in the area. I know um, Cliff Bossman was there and um, he's had some other artists and I've been there um, as well. And But I just wanted to reiterate that, it, you know, during the holidays, he kind of, I think it kind of took a break. But now that it's 2023, um, you know, I think he's looking for more local artists. I will refer him to this list over here and any artists that you know personally that you think might want to showcase their artwork there, I think would be great. I know it's really important for them, um, for him as far as the conversations we've had to really engage the community and feature um, different, you know, what the community has to offer. So um, yeah, hopefully just tell everyone you know. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Schnell. We're really, really excited that we're uh, going to have, I don't know how many years we've done it because there was the time off, but the Dana Point Art Fest will be happening on Sunday, June the 11th and on Del Prado. And we're also really excited the fact that we will have two blocks this year. So last year we had 60 artists and we're looking at approximately having about 100 artists on um, Del Prado. 
and we're working right now. We've got a great team together. How's that? <laughs> a great team together. We will have a hands-on area in the post office area and um, up and down the street, all the artists. And we're, as I say, just really excited about what's going to be happening this year. We're growing. And if anybody has anything else to help us along the way, wonderful. Love to have you involved. And there'll be music also. Yes. Music and food. So that's all those music, good things. Music, food, and art. Okay. Commissioner Smith Hatch. Um, just a quick update, and I think you guys probably know this, but to put it out there in the record that there is part of the Festival of the Whales is coming up, and there's this great concert on the Cliff series that is going to happen. Um, so you can get tickets at Ticketmaster, <laughs> and it's um, just a, a really neat, cool event that's coming to Dana Point. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think anything's been done there for a few years, so um, it'd be great for everyone to go out and support it. Thank you. Um, my comment after every Arts and Cultural Commission has been on music because we spend so much time talking about wonderful art going on that I want to know about music. And so normally I tell them about um, the Lord of the Strings and they are going to be performing this um, Saturday and it's a one-time show and it's Adam Rafferty and he's over in not, since we really don't have a facility here in Dana Point, they're moving back to the Mission Viejo um, City Hall. Uh, Adam Rafferty. You can go on to the Lord of the Strings and see. Yep. I'd also like to mention the Dana Point Symphony. They had last weekend a real celebration. It was the first time they were back in Dana Point because the construction had finished at St. Edward's Church. And um, it was kind of like a once in a lifetime, the excitement. They had pre-sold 360 tickets and they had more people who came that night and purchased tickets. The next two concerts are, so please put them on there, March 10th and April 21st. And you can go on the website and find out more information. They, um, in addition to doing this, the last time they had a special guest um, violinist who is international. Violinist was born Milan. Uh, in Milan in Italy. And uh, it was a one and in a lifetime experience to be able to hear him. So he was great. Thank you very much. Um, staff, do you have any reports this evening? Thank you, Chair. I will keep it brief. Um, Commissioner Smith Hatch already mentioned that we have a very busy weekend coming up and a, and a couple weekends away from here. The fourth and fifth will be the Festival of Wales. We have the parade on Saturday and the city will be hosting the concert down in the harbor on Sunday. So looking forward to seeing you all there. And once again, thank you guys so much for letting me to attend this evening. It was a pleasure to be here. <laughs> we, we would like to spread our, to everybody so you can invite anybody you want. <laughs> thank you. The next regular meeting of the Arts and Cultural Commission will be April 12th, 2023 at 6 p.m. in the City Council Chamber located at 33282 Golden Lantern, Suite 210, Dana Point, California, uh, 92629. Thank you. <laughs>